All right, so thankfully the mushrooms do get there in time because if they did not, what would we do? <laughs> Kiko, there are more things than mushrooms. Anyways, uh, thankfully they do get there um, and they, they are then put in tin foil and lit on fire. This dish looks like it was cooked by someone camping on acid. That I don't understand. <laughs> Welcome aboard another brand spanking new episode of another Below Deck podcast. My name is Dylan. I am saddled up next to my buddy, real Nicholas Davis, live back in studio. Ahoy, mateys. I got my polo. I got my hat. I do not have my cans. So while Pat does his intro, I'm going to go grab those. Pat, why don't you go ahead? Say, how you doing? Oh, I'm, hi, hey, how you doing? Producer Pat, how you doing? I'm doing great. All right. Thanks for asking. And while Nick searches for his cans. He didn't have his cans on when we started the show? He didn't have his cans on. And I don't think that he was, I don't think he's high or anything. He seems to be pretty hopped up on Jocko's oh. go. Uh, I don't know what episode we're at. All I know is that we're in the slums of the season. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and, oh, what am I doing? Bad hosting. Do you have any PSAs? Yes, I do, Dylan. I'm oh, glad you asked. Oh, my goodness gracious. How can I forget? I will keep my remarks brief. Okay. Okay. So as you know, we've been pitching this whole Patreon thing. That's where I get paid to perform. Well, we all do. Right, right, right. Uh, so look, I know there are tens of thousands of you listening to this goddamn free podcast. So it's time to fucking pony up. The numbers are growing uh, for the show. Therefore, that should, you know, be relative to our growth on Patreon. Uh -huh. So they've heard me pitch this many times. So I'm thinking, what's going to move the needle? So this is how I'm going to do it this week. All right. Dylan's been talking about this tier called the Flight of Phoenix, where apparently for 50 grand, uh, Dylan and Nick are going to fuck and I'm going to hold the camera. You'll be there too. Yeah, holding the camera. No. We'll uh, talk about it. We'll talk this about really it. This really evolved from maybe possibly experimenting each other, but I don't want to step yeah, on yours. I'm so. kind of regretting right, 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 not right. being as loose as so you've he, been. So here's the deal, okay? Because I understand business and I know it moves the needle. We're going to drop that price to 40K <laughs> if 20 new people sign up uh, this week. Okay? It's 15,000 on the, on the website because that's the max you can. 50. 50. All right. So we're we're going to forty thousand. Uh, we're dropping it to forty, and we do have to get in the show, right? Sorry, that's all. So go to uh, patreoncom slash another podcast network and give us five bucks. So if you give us five bucks and you have forty grand, you're willing to part with, you can watch us fuck each other on camera. So let's get into Nick. Final thoughts. Uh, I would just like to say that on one of our future properties, I actually have my own way. I've taken a page out of Pat's book of helping the people acquire $5. Oh, wow. Pretty okay. excited about it. And we do oh. have to get in the show. Let's do it. Oh, you were... Future Property. Oh, Future oh, Property. Okay. Got it. Okay. Uh, and listen to that one. So um, uh, I uh, will say again, I'm going to jump into my thoughts and nots. I know that's a little... Uh, no, do you, it. You know, it's a, it's a little You're always stealing cuff. my thoughts. But anyways, um, this episode was hot garbage. Um, mm -hmm. We're hitting a slump. Um, this is episode like, I don't know. Seven, six or seven, six yeah. Six or seven. This is a, the doldrums of the season. Mm -hmm. um, we're at the point where Bugs saying that Hannah should have gotten lemons is a, is a storyline that they're editing <laughs> and oh. they're paying attention to. I give it 12 knots. Well, all right, Dylan, can and I- Nick, thoughts and knots. No, hold on. I got to go next because <laughs> I, I, I want to help with that point. Okay. He this can is, this is not all, go next. No, I'm just kidding. You this go. is also the same episode with that storyline about lemons where we spent a cliffhanger on someone potentially breaking a finger the to one. then spending the first five minutes of this episode exploring that. Yeah. I was going to bring that up, but she really did hurt herself. Riveting TV. Oh. Zero knots. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nick is champing and screaming right now. Well, I was upset Captain. because you just got accused of stealing his his thoughts. Yeah. Uh, and I think I'm about to, even though we had the same thought, mm. uh, and which it does all tie in. I feel like we're on the same page. The The drama is just not that hot. No, it's not. And evidenced by uh, the, the finger injury. And I was going to say, I haven't been this riveted, not stealing your word, I haven't mm. been this riveted since Brian fell on his knee. <laughs> well, he kind of just bumped it. It, it was just a, a shocker nonetheless and you're not 
uh, <laughs> 79 knots. All right, so uh, let's get into this episode of Below Deck Mediterranean. Uh, so I assumed the Svengali's at Bravo were up to their same old tricks when we saw Jessica slam her finger. I said last week there's no way her finger is hurt, but turns out Jess did fracture said finger. Hairline fracture, not an easy wound to heal. That's where I'll, I'll give him a little bit of credit. Usually, you know, Ashton just gets dragged underwater and then he's fine. And mm. Brian bumps his knee and it's all pussy, but he's fine. Don't forget last season with Chris's back, okay? Oh, that's right. Uh, it's, it's tough on the body working on these boats. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so Pete, having learned uh, absolutely nothing, says that he needs to come to his boss, uh, but we'll get to him later. We don't really ever hit this part of the show this early. But get ready for that groovy music. It's time for the preference sheet meeting. Mm -hmm. This is where me and Pat shut the fuck up, don't watch the show, and listen to Nick tell us about the guests, if you're a new listener. And now we have to restart the music. Mm. You don't have to wait for it. I, I cut it. But if we just sit here, we can cut it out of the audio and it could be a very funny video clip. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, so now we have to start it over. Uh, here's where I give the preferences of the new charter guests. Yep. A really fun one. And I think I might have some inside info that you might have gleaned, but they didn't say it explicitly, and I was surprised they stayed away from it. Uh, our primary charter guest is Bernardo. Um, it is Bernardo's birthday. They will be ce celebrating. He's a real estate mogul who's put together a fabulous group of Miami's most elite entrepreneurs, uh, models and designers i'm sticking with it and <clears throat> one of them was a chiropractor so okay yeah i was gonna say we're the models uh also, okay Bernardo, I, guess it, I was gonna be named that really someone in the family you can go ahead sorry no that, that's fine Bernardo i love, I, love he, I would prefer honestly <laughs> if we just did a podcast about each other's histories uh but we have to target an audience mm -hmm. um uh but hey you you spoke of the chiropractor let me uh skip ahead to jocelyn miranda she's not just a chiropractor. She's the most sought after chiropractor with a huge list of cele celebrity clientele mm. in Miami. Okay. Um, and then, of course, we have Giancarlo, who is Bernardo's husband. Okay. They're married. That was not said. It was yeah. on the preference sheet in the screenshot. That's next level stuff. The young bottom. Yeah. Yes. Is that the guy complaining about vodka? Just so I can. The juice. The, oh, the juice. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, this is, you know. I'll talk about it later, but bottom's the right choice. Right. I've said it many times. Uh, he he did seem like a, bo a bottom to me, even though you do not, and you've said it many times. Yeah. But uh, It's the it, right side of the coin. But lest you think he was just some sugar baby twink, uh, uh, Giancarlo, actually a neurosurgeon. Wow. The guy complaining about the juice. Yes, shocking. I never, shocking. I, I never would. Look at those eyebrows. Look at those eyebrows. Also He's shocked. shocked. All three of us, I He's believe. Shocked. Your, your eyebrows are kind of covered by a shadow because of your hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but and my I, readers got three for 25. Uh, nice, yeah. You got to yeah. keep them in every... Keep really one have to go to an optometrist. You, you should <laughs> keep one here. Really. No, no, no. I got it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so that that was those both those things shocked me one less than the others. Though they are married, I do think there might be some some uh, back and forth with the fellows going because when they were on the uh, although that could have been one of the other couples. Uh, never mind. I was going to say okay, uh, close relationship. That was conjecture, and that has no place in no, the preference. Sheet. No definitely place. not. Uh, this is for fact. Their best friend Ursa is also a realtor and a model meaning she's a model from Mexico and has known Bernardo since their children. Yeah. Uh, Ursa's husband, Victor, is an accomplish, accomplished entrepreneur who owns a number of businesses. Gosh, I'm half expecting Pat to spring up on this boat. Mm. Uh, they're, they're so diverse in their entrepreneurship. Yeah. Uh, and then we have Joel Lizon and Edwin Berrios, who sound like an adorable interior designer, gay couple, and longtime friends with the couple. Yeah. Uh, well, and, he's a monster. And so. uh, rounding out the group, we got and Andrea... Leal Chica. Yep. And also real estate uh, mogul. Okay, um, got it. And then uh, uh, they want to keep the tequila flowing, 
night two, surprise birthday dinner for Bernardo with a mariachi band pulling up to the yacht and they're vegan or one is. Okay. Mm. And that concludes the preference sheet meeting. Now, I, Great job. I do think that you mind a lot of stuff. I think that you kind of kind of leaned back on the veganism thing, which is a, a prominent uh, prominent storyline. Um, yes? I, I, I'm excited for your addendum. I'm excited you add stuff outside the walls of the preference sheet meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it has always been sort of a bit of mine that I don't actually ever hit their preference sheets. <laughs> oh, right. I really more give you a... a, a, can, a I, can, can I tell you something? I have... I had no fucking idea that that was part of the bit. Yeah, yeah. I've been I really, doing it for so long. <laughs> I literally had no fucking idea. I, I really try to give you a groundwork to, without even seeing the preference sheet meeting, knowing what these people might want. Mm, and I think it. I do a pretty damn good job of it. You do a it. fantastic uh, job. You see, that's why it was so... It, it went over your head because right. you still somehow instinctively know their preferences. Yes. Nair, do I never bring up the preference sheet meeting in unless it has something funny. Like one time they were like with all the kid, they were like, no preference, no preference, no preference, titty milk or something. Oh, no preference. Sure, it was yeah, hilarious yeah. stuff. But yeah, I mean, yeah, tell us about what food they like. So <laughs> this vegan thing, I will, we'll get to plenty. Um, but I will say that it's 2020. I'll give them 2019. Learn how to make five vegan things. Okay, go. <laughs> vegan mokeka. Don't make me angry at you, Kiko. I love you, Kiko. Five things. Okay, so Jess arrives back of the boat. Um, are you guys annoyed with her and Rob yet? Because they're starting to piss me off. Um, I know we're in a pressure cooker of romance aboard Beef Wellington, but I don't... What is with the tenderness? It's been three weeks, one of which you guys were like, hey, I'm Jess, and hey, I'm Rob the Zombie. I don't understand... But where this love is coming from not to get ahead of myself but one hot scene when she asked him to button up her uh her work jersey and uh she said i'm so used to you just unbuttoning it i sure. got a little little hot there okay <laughs> you grill yeah okay i have to agree with my friend pat there mm -hmm. uh <laughs> bosoms popping out of a blouse is, is quite a turn on just visually for me even saying it i'm getting a little hot also it might be because the ac all right I will, move more, on. I, have more stuff. I will say though and this needs to be said uh the, the trashy hand tattoo a, a big turn off for me big big turn off she rocks it but i in general i agree but it's quite a commitment mm -hmm. it, it is uh quite a commitment it's it's not quite the face tat but it's it's something yeah um so can we get to sandy let's do it Jess comes to Sandy with a splint and a split bone, and Sandy says, don't worry, we may have to fire you. <laughs> so enjoy this charter with that cloud. Um, do you guys have an issue with this? Well, I kind of do, only because I've been sued before as an employer. Got it. Uh, this is a workers' comp nightmare right here. <laughs> well, maritime law. It is maritime law. But at some point, you're going to get to, uh, you know, you're going to get to a port somewhere, and there are laws there. <laughs> yeah. I believe That'll you can come up later. That'll I, come up you later. You can file legal work once yeah. you get to land. If there's uh, even if there's wood around the boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, I have conflicted thoughts because, yeah, I agree. If this was on land, uh, yeah, there's a lawsuit, and I feel like Jess would jump at the chance uh, oh, to have an easy payday, just I don't hang know out. That Jess is litigious. Oh, I just—it's such an easy layup. It's not even like you can't even blame someone when they're taking like you know they're just cashing a check. Sandy's a bitch. She deserves it. Horrible My leader. thing is that even if you need to fire her, how about you keep that one under wraps, huh? Why don't you just um, you know, say young lady's already got a shattered finger. We don't need to shatter her confidence or any other part of her body sandy you're a terrible leader terrible, terrible. fucking leader and terrible a bitch <laughs> okay so we got a meanwhile here meanwhile uh bugs is told by malia to go rat fuck creepy pete which i think she absolutely should have seeing that <laughs> seeing that they were docked kiko complains further about the charter guests dietary choices um so what we have here is a self-fulfilling prophecy he says when you don't have confidence you can't cook and the line that really cheesed me off, which oddly enough um, is a no-go for vegans. Mm. Um, cheese. Cheese. Bad joke. Uh, is hey, I, a, I can't wait to hear what you have to say about uh, teriyaki mushrooms well, served I'm in aluminum tinfoil. I'm about to say the line that really cheesed me off, which uh, was, I'm not a vegan chef. Okay. You're a chef, period. You don't own your own brick and mortar, Kiko. 
You could perhaps in the future say at Kika's Mukeka, you know, Chihuahua, we don't serve vegans. Fine. It's a silly choice because th- they have money too. But mm. Beef Wellington is not in any way, shape, or form Kiko's Mukeka, you know, Chihuahua. You're working for other people. You're a servant. You do not get to dictate what you cook and what you do not cook. Don't make me angry at you, Kika. Mm. It's incredible how seemingly unflappable he has been up to this point. Just yeah. Keep, keeping that cheery disposition. But man, you removed meat from the equation and the man absolutely fell apart. It was actually sad. I felt <laughs> I felt sincerely sad. <laughs> He's a different but person. But I remembered it was not that big of a deal. It's like the Incredible Hulk. Yeah. It's like Bruce Banner and the Hulk. Mm-hmm. The Hulk is obviously a representation of him and his we, feelings on vegans. Oh, got you. I got <laughs> What a metaphor. A pop culture metaphor. <laughs> Trademark bad icky pop culture metaphor. Um, I will say, let's not forget that while he has a cheery disposition, a lovely smile, and a funny accent, his timing has been, for the most part this season, abjectly poor Mm -hmm. really fucking bad and we'll get to that later um all right so this is where hand uh what's her name hannah chats with sandy i can see how you did that (laughs) excuse me she chats with kiko oh and an unlikely iago is born aka alliance I was going to say an unlikely duo formed this Survivor-esque alliance. It's uh, unbelievable. I haven't seen one this unlikely since the fox and the hound. <laughs> mm. <laughs> hope it doesn't end that sadly. <laughs> well, one of these people has a drug problem, so it's not going down That's a good true. road. That's true. Well, she doesn't have... She, just have oh. she has a bad tooth. Mm-hmm. She has a I bad didn't say tooth. who. She has oh. a bad tooth. Uh, so... <laughs> Who would have thought Kiko would be Hannah's little fucking minion? I don't. I, I'm not liking Kiko this episode oh, one bit. On. You read the book Forty Eight Laws of Power. When someone's trying to form uh, an alliance with you to get you to do some dirty work with them, you just sit in agreement, nod your head, don't add too much to it. That leaves you open to pick whatever side you want to when the hammer drops. Okay, got it. He's playing it smart here. What is he going to do? Push against that? No. You just say, okay, let me know. Let me know when you need me. Mm-hmm. Well, he does later on make good to this minion type relationship, which I found abhorrent. <laughs> and he was so cryptic about it. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Keep your eyes out of the levels. <laughs> All right, let's get to the next morning. Next morning. Hannah holds a meeting with the girls. Itinerary, what the fuck are we going to do? Um, uh, meetings rather a snore headlining 2020 for me, but Hannah does say something interesting or should I say very stupid. The one good thing about bugs is that she knows what she's doing. Is it the tooth? This is unbelievable. The one good thing about bugs is that she's unbelievable (laughs) at her job. Jesus, Hannah, you are pissing me off this season. All right, let's she's, get... She's, yeah. she's like, Jess may be completely useless and one-handed, but at least she doesn't do her job better than me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's, uh, that's a point of contention. So Sandy and Bugs. Um, she says to Sandy that uh, Pete was speaking sexually to her about the second stew. And God, the clip they played. Uh, Pete says, I'm going to undress her with my fucking teeth. <laughs> I, I, I call him the unit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it's unbelievable. This this requires Sandy to have a meeting with him pretty fucking quick. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's set the whole thing up with a little clip. I got a charter that starts soon, but I'm seriously considering letting you go and f-ing leaving you at the dock. Because from what I've heard, the way you talk about women and how you treat women is not okay. You want to explain your side? Just break it down for me, Pete, because this is very serious, please. Um, I might have said some inappropriate things um, and talked about females inappropriately. What makes you think that you can speak like that on deck? I agree. I feel like I became too much of an open book. It's not okay in the world, Mm -hmm. much less on a boat. Right. You need to get your head right and really consider... What comes out of my mouth. Don't let it happen again. You're lucky I'm not leaving you on the dock. Just do your job. I'm going to give this pig some credit. Regular old Belichick, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he owns it, all right? Whether or not he means it or not, we'll see how long this uh, behavior <laughs> is curbed. But right. I, he did a smart thing here. You know, uh, later on, I don't want to give it away, but I guess party Pete is being retired for professional Pete. But uh, 
what are you doing with your voice? I don't know. Okay. I think he doesn't doesn't trust it or something. Yeah. Something like yeah. That. Is yeah. that it? Or yeah, you... that's right. What I was doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Pete is. Hey, hold on, hold on. My one more point on this. She, Sandy's like, I don't know where this comes from in this world. Uh, Sandy, it came from prior to 2015 when men could walk around the earth and talk like a fucking pig for the better part of a century and no one would say jack shit to them. Right. And now they're getting called out for them. Let's give gross men a little bit of an educational period and then we'll see their behavior after 2017. Five years is a good good buffer. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. he's on the, on the, in terms of men being disrespectful to women and about women, he's on quite a, a far end of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. I'm going I'm to take her fucking clothes off my teeth. Well, thought <laughs> I cannot defend that behavior. No, you can't. It, it, it's really hard to defend. And I thought this was actually another example of Sandy be a, being a shitty leader because if this was f- the first offense, then fine. But it was actually the second time he was warned about specifically respect. Yeah. And this was actually worse than the first offense. Mm, yes. Uh, so I didn't like that when earlier, when Bugs told uh, Sandy, at first Sandy goes, you know what? You don't have to say anything else. Mm-hmm. And that would have been fine. I thought she was getting rid of Pete. That would have mm-hmm. been the move. Instead, she goes, and she puts the onus on Bugs, and she's like, do you, do you, are you comfortable with him working here? And Bugs is, she's a, she's a professional. Among, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't really like her, but she's a pro and she's not going to be like, no, kick him off. She'll work under these conditions. Right. But that should have been on Sandy. She shouldn't put, put it on her. He yeah. should have been gone. Bugs is familiar with maritime law. She's seen worse. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So Pete uh, continues getting his fucking teeth <laughs> kicked in. Uh, Malia chats with him. And to quote the late Arlie Ermey, she kind of rips his head off and shits down his throat. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and by the way, didn't have the common one. decency to give a guy a reach around. What? Oh, isn't that from the same scene? <laughs> is it? Sorry. I hate that film. Mm. I really don't like it. It's that really film. two films. It's two films. It's disjointed. Uh, Stanley Kubrick for me. What's all the fucking fuss about? It's just pretentious bullshit, you know? Mm. Talk about it in our, uh, our upcoming movie podcast, another movie podcast. Mm. I, I, yeah, Exclusive to Patreon. I hate funny people. It's like two different movies, too. Um, okay, so Malia does tell him that he is no longer going to be the lead deckhand. Uh, once again, he takes it kind of like, you know, chauvinistic champ. Mm-hmm. Um, the part that kind of irked me was that she tells Alex and Rob the zombie that Pete has been removed from his post, and the zombie says that I think that was important what you did. Hey, Rob, I'm not sure if it's Jess's or Malia's, but you have some shit on your nose. <laughs> and it's really starting. I'm not liking this guy. He's he's just Alex, too, in this moment. Like, I, I get that she's a woman, but you don't have to brown nose. Just do your fucking job. I don't think Malia gives a shit that you guys are, like, buddying up to her. You, she just wants to see you do her job, do your job, and not be uh, misogynistic pieces of shit. Well, wait till we, we got a little tease in next week's episode with uh, Robbie, Rob Zombie there. That's true. That's true. I can't wait for next episode. Yeah, he's being too sensitive. Enough. Mm. Uh, I'm sure he would find a way to spin this, though. You'd be like, hey cool it man you don't have to be that far up her ass and he'd be like i'm just doing it to put my mother through rehab yeah your mother is your mother's dead dead. stop talking about your sub i mean my uncle my uncle's really an addict oh i gotta drug run drugs (laughs) Uh, okay so um i don't want to sound like an enemy of women of which i most certainly am but (laughs) pete and bugs talking to one another the unit call him the unit (laughs) i'm sorry (laughs) Um, now listen, Pete is absolutely, it's full blown delusional and this criticism doesn't have anything to do with him, but Bugs has this line, which I've heard before. Um, I'm a flirtatious person, so don't mistake that for, for flirting. Mm. This sentence to me doesn't make sense, or at least it, it presents a very hard person to, to decipher. If someone was just like angry all the time and was like, Hey, I'm, I'm really, I'm a fucking pissed off person, but don't mistake that for me being pissed off at you. That's insane. It is insane, but I have to say this. Yes. I have to say this. So I guess you were kind of referring to the time where the unit goes and apologizes to Bugs. Yes. She gracefully accepts the apology, yeah. says, let's sweep it under the rug, or, well, kind of, and let's move the fuck on. I love that about the Bugs. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the unit is kind of starting to grow on me. Ugh. But while simultaneously I was thinking, what am I watching? Everyone's getting along. This is so boring. <laughs> Horrendously boring. <laughs> It's so boring. And and somehow their template that they've created so beautifully, and I cracked it today, 
what they do for casting to like cause this strife for both departments, except Kate, she's always chief stew, so she's always the leader. Right. But they put someone semi incompetent or new in the lead role, mm -hmm. someone more more accomplished yes. and capable in the second role, yeah. and then followed by one or two more incompetent people who yes. will then put stress on one and two. And again, and it's well beautiful. Done. And again. It costs $60,000 a day. Okay, so um, uh, let's get to the guests. They arrive. Uh, Hannah says that she really hopes she doesn't need to bring out any of her non-existent Spanish. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Why would you need to do that? And if it doesn't exist, what are you pulling out? It's like me saying I'm pretty nervous about my wife's work event. I hope I don't have to pull out any of my non-existent magic tricks. They don't exist. What do I <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you have to have something <laughs> before you make it disappear. Uh, okay, so um, the old guy is talking about Kiko like he's a fucking Pop-Tart. <laughs> and the young one who hates juice asks Hannah Whoa. to bring him. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, gotcha. I mean, he, he yeah. might. He's, uh, I don't know. Um, he asks Hannah to bring him the juice so he can taste it. Now, listen, I mean, listeners of this show know, you know, full well that I'm I'm a little bit of a or a gourmand and, mm -hmm. and I understand where he's coming from. I get that Ocean's Ocean, ocean spray, spray is hardly juice. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Those two gentlemen in the cranberry pods or fields or bogs. puddles, bogs, whatever the fuck. We went on field trips to them in Wisconsin. <laughs> Yeah, at Warren's, all. Warren's Wisconsin. That all presents well and stuff, but this is piss, and, and I think that he knows that. But um, a couple things. Why are you a cunt when you're talking to people who are serving you? He says, don't ever bring me this orange juice again. I know that you're joking about it, but don't be like that. Um, and also, why if the juice did not meet the standard of your propped up palate, did you then pour it into your drink and then drink it and then say, blah? <laughs> Uh, now uh, let me ask you this: Was it the juice? There was the juice thing, but didn't he also say, "Don't bring me this vodka ever again"? No, he was referring to the orange juice. Uh, just the, the juice completely. So yeah. he doesn't care what kind of vodka he was getting. Yeah. Well, I say propped up palate for a reason. I'll get there. Mm -hmm. This guy's a fucking f fraud. If I may, uh, referring to that little uh, uh, jag that he gave out, which is "Don't ever bring this to me again" or something. Yeah. Uh, if I'm the help, I'd say, "Well, we only have two and a half days with each other." Oh, okay. So I'm a, I'm going to attempt to accomplish that, but then we'll never see each other again. So that yeah. kind of fervor that you're throwing at me, sure, is unnecessary. Right, exactly. This isn't a long term relationship. You don't need to establish power. Uh, what am I trying to say? Pat, Dominance? go ahead. Yeah. Uh, quickly about your line that he said. The uh, English language is escaping me tonight. Yes. Uh, don't ever bring me this again. Yeah. Uh, that type of banter can be fun, but right. he, he didn't put the, like the right inflec no. inflection on it. It came across way too harsh. Yeah. He's like, he might as well just be like, don't ever bring me this again. Threw it on yeah, exactly. like <laughs> The cadence is wrong. Oh, no, no. I think he was dead serious. There are human beings <laughs> out there that are serious how they talk to other human beings. Yeah. Case in point, I break my iPhone. I make an appointment at that Apple at the Sherman Oaks thing there closed i show up five minutes late this little bitch says to me um i'm gonna allow you to come in and keep your appointment i almost canceled it let's not let this happen again <laughs> whoa and i read her name oh tag God. and i said well sloan uh, <laughs> power move i uh i don't see a confluence of events where this will ever happen again so shut the fuck up. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I had, I had a, a similar situation like that uh, on an international flight to Barcelona with a flight attendant named Zoila, who was mm. an absolute cunt to my entire family. Uh, we were escorted off the plane by Spanish guard because my mom is Jewish and psychopathic when it <laughs> comes to traveling on an airplane. Mm. She once stood in the door on, from a flight to Charlotte because the dog was not on the plane. She refused to move <laughs> until she saw the crate get on the plane. And sometimes I bristle at the term, <laughs> but that is white privilege. Oh. <laughs> you would be hogged, uh, zip tied. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> in the dictionary, when they give an example how to use that word in a sentence. Mm -hmm. I think it's more, yes, it's definitely white privilege, but also just very yente -y. Um But anyway, there was, a, there was a mutiny on the plane. Get her off. <laughs> I, I I love Pat's move. Read, read the name. Yeah, uh, and, and if you it, bonus points if you lean over and squint at the name tag, <laughs> and then spit on it. Uh, okay, so <laughs> let's um, let's watch out for professional Pete. Okay, do you guys want to cover this because he's weirder than Parker now in my book. I'm Parker. 
I'm fully convinced that uh, uh, Party Pete, Professional Pete, whatever it is, this guy is on this boat thinking he's gone or gone or some kind of fame. This whole shtick that's going on, I don't think he realizes he's being made out to look like a complete asshole that will right. probably be unemployable for the near future. Well, is unemployable. Mm -hmm. He was terminated. Oh, that's right. That's what they told us. Yet I've seen him in every single episode. Well, he, he'll no longer be back on. And, and for I, I just want to say I am glad they kept him on. Um, you know, they said they were going to cut him out. It's almost like nobody gives a shit whether or not you cut these people out or not. But I will say to the producers of the of MTV's The Challenge, they did this with a ferocious pair of scissors mm -hmm. to one D, who in a climactic moment, I don't know if that's the right word. English language is escaping me. She goes up against Jenny, loses. There's that's been a rivalry the entire season. We see nothing from her. No reaction. No OTF whatsoever. No tears. No blood. What is the point? No one gives a shit. Uh, like you said, th I mean, this is Exhibit A. I mean, where uh, who's holding Bravo's feet to the fire for saying they're making this change and doing nothing? Great point. Hey, who's right. that bitch that we deal with with PR at Bravo? Amanda. Amanda. Uh, save it, Amanda. <laughs> Spare us the lies and the virtual signaling. You didn't do anything. I want to talk to the editor and say, did you guys really do anything or just no, make that as an announcement? They didn't. Then shut the fuck up. All right. So now let's get to uh, the... Yes? I, I had a thought about uh, professional party. Pete. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, he... I was just baffled in what setting other than your chosen profession <laughs> does professional Pete come up? Yeah. Uh, yeah he, he, exactly. needs, he needs double wardings before he, uh -huh. he brings them out. Is and a, 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 another question, just to piggyback off that, why would party Pete be out when the sun's up? <laughs> <laughs> why would party Pete be on the dock? And last thing, because actually this is almost the second time I forgot it. I didn't make a big deal about it the first time I forgot it. That was something else I forgot and made a big deal out of. Yeah. Pat reminded me, mm. I agree, and I even think that's the reason he groveled. The man just wants fame because I think he is very Ashton-esque, where his only goal in life, the only thing that validates him is banging his sluts. Pussy, pounding yeah. ass. Yeah, and, and he knows... Uh, he knows being on the show is the way to do it, and yeah. he knows getting kicked off the show for mistreating women is right. not the way to no. do it. No. I don't know. He could find some... Oh, yeah. some. Piece, he yeah. could find some stuff and, you know... Oh, the, there's girls out there. They like yeah, that kind I of stuff. Bible mm -hmm. belt's got, mm -hmm. got plenty of... That's a buffet well, in Los them. Angeles. That's yeah. true. Um, so, anyways, let's get to the biggest bitch on the boat, and when I say bitch, this has nothing to do with sexuality. I could find a better word, but forgive me. When I see a man ask a woman with an injured hand to unpack his suitcase... I struggle to find other words aside from bitch and possibly prime candidate for capital punishment. Let's uh, just play this clip real quick and then we'll chat about it. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. Actually, I'm great with just this one being unpacked. Just that one? Okay, yeah. and perfect. And could you make sure that I get either an iron or a steam room or a steam? Perfect, okay. That'd be great, cool. thank you. You're welcome. How do you not feel guilty? I have a broken finger and you want me to unpack your luggage? Is that necessary? <clears throat> $60,000 a day. Oh, stop. No, I don't care stop. that she has a broken finger. That is not his problem. You're a sociopath. Part of what happens when you go on these charters is someone unpacks your luggage. It's a wonderful, delightful aspect of all this high, high level vacationing. Stop it, Dylan. If that you is saw her unpacking your luggage, you would go, that part of this vacation does not matter. Please stop doing that. I will do it. I, I think I think there's two different things here. I don't think any of us would do it ourselves. We would see it. Mm. We would not ask. But I don't think he's with, uh, like, out of his rights to ask her. Like, I ha I was actually on Pat's side. Like, oh, she was appalled that she was asked to do her job. Right. Like, if you if the finger does not work, if you cannot put stuff away, get off the boat. And I guarantee it's not that bad. Take off the cast and work. Mm -hmm. Hey. You, I, I just seems cool. A but. colonel is is within his rights to rip off the fingernails of of one of our captured oh, boys. Go. But he, you would say that uh, that that kind of points a finger at a, pro, a shitty part of your character. Let me dig deeper here. When he's asking for that to be done, he does is not necessarily saying you have to do it. This is what I'd like done. <laughs> she can go ask a coworker to do it because this is part of the package of what you're paying for for $60,000 a day. Instead, her Blown attitude away. isn't, I feel bad that I 
I'm having a hard time doing this with my fucking uh, whacked out finger. Yeah. I'm going to have to ask R Rob Zombie to help me. And I feel bad that I have to do that. Not how fucking dare he. What was me? Again, are you still being paid? That. Or can we start deducting some money <laughs> from your daily pay? Your pe this passion. Hey, right. this guy's a scumbag. God, I'm on the same, I'm the same page. Scumbag. I, I can't believe you two. I will say Jess would have had to go the extra step to pull uh, Rob the Zombie's head out of Malia's ass. Okay. So you show up at a yogurt shop and you, or not get an ice cream cone and the guy's got one fucking arm or something like that <laughs> okay and you go hey i'll take the chocolate cone over there and uh put some jimmies on he's like i only got one arm it's like how do you operate here 30 hours a week with okay. one arm what you about need this? one to scoop and one to hold the cone you idiot what about this you walk into a suite at a nice hotel the guy bringing up your bags has one arm he starts unloading all of them you're not gonna help him no because that'd be <laughs> disrespectful to him and he starts unpacking your stuff you're not gonna be like uh he's working with one arm he knows not, what his job is that's say, a horrible you need analogy a hand? see D dylan thinks he's uh, he's an empath but you see handy uh, you see a <laughs> handicap i see uh handy capable there was a guy at ralph's he was a bagger at it's a grocery store in los angeles he had a fucking hook for a hand oh. i didn't say hey let me get that i said it's, it's what you're being paid for you know i actually had that guy one time he punctured a bunch of capri suns i bought really pissed and i'm telling you fool me once a shame on you fool me twice shame on me uh do not ask these people why, where they got the peg leg the hook whatever it's never what you think it's diabetes it's always diabetes. <laughs> it's always diabetes. And then quick anecdote, really quickly, I was at FedEx. This guy had this horrific, like, gangrenous scar on his hand. I said, what the fuck happened to your hand? He said, I was born that way. Yeah, it, there, there's another real big deflator. It's like, hey, man, make shit up. Wouldn't you have fun War. With Jesus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Easy. I was in a bunker. I, you know, you say what happened to my hand, but you should see what happened to those three. Uh, 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 Improvised uh, explosive. Okay, let's move on to Rob the Zombie, uh, who tells his apple orange joke. Hey, Rob, you're creeping everyone out. <laughs> this guy, this guy does not have an eighth of the personality required to date somebody like Jess. I just mm. think he's way too fucking boring. I they're they're living on looks and physical attraction at this point. Yeah. Uh, that rears its ugly head about three months into the relationship yeah, after exactly. the fucking we is yes. wearing out. Yeah. Mm. I think he has the exact amount of personality you for do. Jess. She can just go in his ear and she's like reading some book and she can just talk and talk and talk and talk about mm. whatever drivel she's reading to make yeah. herself feel like an and intellectual. He goes, oh, and he just orange. nods and he goes, oh, that's pretty far off. Oh, oh. Groovy. and she's like he's deep and brooding where they're both dumb as a bu bunch of rocks it's <laughs> cute and fun though and so he's, that he's, being he's, said <laughs> hey rob zombie and jess rob we'd the love, zombie we'd love to have you on the we'd show love to have oh as a couple show. that'd be fun oh um all right so kiko says open your eyes with the lemons um now i'm officially angry at him i i, I don't know what do you guys have to say about this i really do not care i don't care I don't care. What were they there at the end of the day? Who or they cares? were not there. Yeah, who cares? Who cares? Who Open cares? your eyes. We um, all mess up too. We're gonna make a storyline out of this. She forgot the provision person forgot to bring lemons. Yeah, and Bug said, uh, we're not gonna use your lemons. We should have our own lemons. Whoa! Whoa! Hold the presses. Is that it? Yes. Okay, so speaking of lemons, um, this little fucker Let's whose uh, buds are so sensitive uh, to juice gets a, a special drink made for him. Now, I don't know if you guys caught this, but um, he loves it. Loved it. Loves it, of course. Now, the main source of acid in said beverage um, was, as we talked about, they're low on lemons. The kind of lemon juice that she added was the one that comes in a plastic lemon with a green top. You know, the kind of lemon juice that my like alcoholic Uncle Hub squirts at the bottom of a liter of Evan Williams just to kind of mix it up. Mm. This guy is nothing more than a fraudulent bottom. If he really had the palate for juice, he would taste that that piss is in his beverage. He would have sent it back. I don't think that he's above sending a drink back that he doesn't like so Occam's razor would say that he did like that drink mm -hmm. and his tongue did not sniff out the piss lemon juice that was in that beverage fraudulent I, bottom i had the exact same thought about the juice yeah the man has zero palate zero for it. palate he couldn't tell sunny d from a uh, glass pulled from the orange groves of florida yep. freshly squeezed yep. immediately this man does not give a fuck about juice what this man needs what this man craves is attention yep. and when she said special drink that yes. is the only thing a hundred percent special a hundred percent made for you charles special. yeah mm -hmm. well that's the whole thing i don't know if you guys knew this the idea of starbucks where they put your name on it that's the 
the attraction of you coming back there. This was made for you, you fucking narcissist. Oh, wow. That's an interesting tactic. I and didn't I, know that. I have a huge theory on that, That because for a long time, you'd see people's names spelled horribly, not even close to what they said. Right. And I think that was an inside marketing campaign Ooh, for people yeah. to post their drink on social media. Totally. And in spades. Yeah. Uh, hey, one thing on this, and I, and Dylan, I want an apology because at some point this <laughs> douchebag, uh, th this fake uh, bottom, fraudulent bottom, fraudulent that, bottom, has does big. note that European vodka is disgusting. So European don't juice, juice, European juice. Yes, it's an asinine comment. I hope we really keep hitting that because I mean, man, it, it's getting dicey. <laughs> European juice. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, all right, lunch. Lunch. Ceviche Tropical, a little redundant. Uh, shrimp skewers, shrimp tacos. That's not right. Those are rolled. You do not know what a fucking taco is. Uh, also, we've got uh, quinoa salad. Kiko, how hard was that? Huh? How fucking hard was that? Vegetables and grains. Protein heavy grains. Then he whips up uh, strawberry gazpacho, perfect for a Spaniard. Again, I ask, how hard was that? Now, uh, we get to Mushroom Gate. You guys have thoughts? It was Snooze Fest for me. Uh, I, I, is this where Bugs tastes it and says, we're not bringing this out? It's too yes. chewy. He yes. overcooked it or something? Well, I, uh, this is the only thought I had on it. I lied. I, I said it was Snooze Fest, but there was something that did, you know, peak a little bit. <laughs> What are you doing cooking shitty mushrooms that were like left out? You know that they're shitty. Ugh. They wouldn't they wouldn't turn out that way. <clears throat> and he admitted as much. He said that it's not my fault, it's the ingredient. Why'd you put the ingredient in the pan you pick? Now one move here that I caught, and this is uh, Forty one pots. Forty one pots. Oof. Can't wait to see what you have to say <laughs> oh my <God>. about <laughs> mushrooms <laughs> in teriyaki served in a crumpled up piece of tin foil. It's a real halftime show. <laughs> Bugs, uh, when the mushrooms are unservable, she walks out and she essentially lies to the guests. Yes. What did she say? Oh, they didn't make it on the boat. Uh, she said, we're out of mushrooms, but he's going to whip you up something delicious. I like that. Mushrooms Boy, she's good. She's great with guests. Being delivered later, later tonight. Later tonight. It was an yes. explicit lie. I agree. Mm -hmm. Explicit lie. Um, all right. So let's get to planning dinner. Um, the HR crossover from Portuguese to English rears its ugly head again, guys. Mm. Burrata. Mm. How do you not know this? You're an MMA savant. You don't know the difference between H's in Portuguese and H's here, R's? Uh, I, Burrata. Yeah, no, I, okay. I'll i hear it, but then I, I, I'm i hooked on phonics, American phonics. Um, all right, so she asks him, what is the main dish for the vegan? And he says, ha, ha, here's the thing. Whoa. No, 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 no. Not here's the thing. Plan a dish for the vegan. You idiot. He says that he's got spaghetti with pomodoro. It doesn't have to be zucchini pasta, you fool. They eat carbs too often many times. And only if the mushrooms get there will he make the firework display on a plate that is teriyaki mushrooms. We'll get there. Served in aluminum foil. <laughs> okay. So nighttime. Nighttime! Kiko is once again very, very late. Um... Also, I was horrified by the cut on those tomatoes. You saw him plating that burrata salad. The, the tomatoes looked like they were cut by a freshman in Wisconsin trying to eat clean. It was absolutely Whoa. pathetic knife work. Um, also, the guests are told nothing. They're told nothing. They sit there and they drink and no one comes out and says, we're running behind. We're 15 minutes late. Guys, hang out for 20 more. Nothing. They meander themselves up to the dining table. Mm. $60,000 a day. $60,000. It's Were you guys not fucking blown away by that? It's crazy to me. This the, is giving me anxiety I, watching it. I'll tell you what. I'm kind of torn here because, again, this is horrible service. Uh, but... And the guests, I kind of... Ah, oh God, I'm torn because I, 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 I kind of hate some of the guests. So I, I, know. I kind of enjoy it. Uh, I know, but they're 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 kind of not that bad too. That's true. For the money they're paying, they should be waited on hand and foot. I will say, uh, there are different groups that wouldn't give a flying fuck that this is running thirty minutes late. They're just partying, they're drinking, they're not thinking about it. Mm -hmm. But these guys are are this, these guests are hungry. They're obsessed they're here, with dieting. Yes, and they're waiting for their food. This is a big time, big, yep. very important to them. And yep. and if you're. Uh, 
a group of charter guests that would be on the verge. Like, you're kind of cool, but you like having stuff nice. This type of shit crew, poor excuse for a crew, is going to set you over the edge where mm-hmm. it's it's not going to work out. Yeah, honestly, I would go to the captain. I'd say, listen, we're paying $60,000 a day. Two days is more money than you make in an entire fucking year. <laughs> this is unacceptable you need to sort this shit out quick i'm surprised when they like meandered up the stairs handed in spray him with a bottle of water and tell him to get back down there (laughs) given her attitude yeah all right so yeah oh i was gonna say i would do that dylan as a guest if this kind of service and i was this type person or i would remind them hey i will leave a strongly worded yelp review right Mm -hmm. and it will start with if i could give him a zero I would. All right. So thankfully, the mushrooms do get there in time because if they did not, what would we do? <laughs> Kiko, there are more things than mushrooms. Anyways, uh, thankfully, they do get there um, and they, they are then put in tin foil and lit on fire. This dish looks like it was cooked by someone camping on acid. The, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I do not understand why these guests are so cool with eating mushroom this looks like a campfire side dish not a fucking i don't want to say sixty thousand dollars a day but i'll say it again it's a sixty thousand dollars a day dinner and you're being served wet mushrooms soaked in teriyaki in tin foil that's on fire I, I think this is more evidence that we have a fraudulent bottom, a fraudulent top, yes. and a fraudulent uh, mixed bag of other uh, yes. sexual preferences. Uh, because I think, to be honest, I'm putting myself in my shoes. I, I sit down there, I'm pissed, it's late. But man, you bring out something that's in flames, I'm going to be oohing and on. I'm, that's, sure. a sh- that's a shell. I'm sure. dumb. I right. don't get food. Right. I, d- you know, smoke and mirrors. <laughs> All right. So I thought it was one of these things where it's uh, the smoke and mirrors where it's kind of like the more they treat you like shit, the more you think there's value to it. The fact that it's this white trashy. thrown like out, last resort. Yeah. That you're like, there's some kind of art to it. Like, you know, if you've ever been to a fucking club in Los Angeles, <laughs> the door guy treats you like you're a piece of shit. You can't die. You're dying to get in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, everyone treats you like garbage. The bartender makes you wait 20 minutes, doesn't make any eye contact with you. And you are dying after you leave this place to recommend it to others. That's insane. Stay home, watch Forensic Files, order Domino's. It's, you'll, you, you, uh, you won't be treated like a second. You're treated like a mule. They're feeding these people mushroom soaked in teriyaki. There's some classic saying about uh, not wanting to be in a club that wants you or something. You know, mm. it's that whole thing. Yeah. They don't want me. I want to be in there. If exactly. You're accept me, like, what exactly. kind of standards do you use? Well, you know, I said I didn't understand why they were so cool with Kiko and I misspoke. Um, I think that they are cool with how terrible Kiko is, large, largely because some of them want to fuck Kiko. Mm-hmm. But um, if it was me and this was put in front of me, I would begin laughing like the fucking Joker and I would flip the table upside down like Teresa Gadici. Now, uh, great season. That, that, that was great season. is the end was of Teresa this Gadici year episode. The Joker? Oh, uh, sorry, yes, she was in the Joker. Okay. So, uh, Dylan, I completely understand that. And I think you would be in your rights to do so if you did, in fact, do that. Prostitution or mushroom teriyaki. Now, dinner is served 40 minutes late. Yes. Now, when this is happening, that's when Captain Sam Sandy comes around to help. Oh. Oh, wait, I read my notes wrong. She's an annoying cunt in the gallery <laughs> offering no purpose other than distract Kiko. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I forgot about the undercooked fish. I forgot about the purple mash. But listen, it's a fucking, it's a piss poor dinner. The mushrooms alone bring it down to a solid 33 pots. Kiko, like you said, had a really poor outing, a really poor outing. It was sad, but we'll see how he does next week that's that's what really makes a man it's not about falling down it's about getting up yeah, absolutely yeah. maybe absolutely. you should talk to party pete and see what he's doing with himself some self-reflection well, there. professional pete remember i bet right. he's right at this very moment he's dming some skank on absolutely Instagram. um all right so that's it for us we'll be back next week remember guys we need you jump in the itunes ratings and reviews leave five stars just one word what do you think about the podcast just leave one word or many if you want but one word's fine also join us on patreon Patreon.com slash another podcast network where 
discounted. Flight of the Phoenix tier will fuck each other on camera for $40,000. $40,000. 20% uh, discount. Big Where time, man. That's big a, time discount. It's called a lost leader. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm Dylan. Say goodbye. <laughs> Nick, say goodbye. Losing my dignity. Uh, bye, boy. Pat. Check you later. Check you later.